All right. Hi, everyone. How's it going? I'm here, Dave Doburn, with uh, Danny Batterman, and we're going to be commentating the first match, Julian versus Caleb. All right. Looks like uh, for those of you just tuning in who missed Overvilch's intro, we've got Caleb on tin fins and Julian on his signature elf deck. Uh, tin fins, for those who are newer to the format, is kind of, I guess, Reanimator Storm is the best way to describe it. It uses Shallow Grave, which is kind of the original Gorio's Vengeance alongside actual Gorio's Vengeance to sneak a Gristlebrand into play uh, with haste, uh, thwap them for seven, then draw a bunch of cards and kill with tendrils. Uh, Julian's deck Elves is kind of hard to classify. You can call it a combo deck because you have the traditional like Glimpse of Nature, Heritage Druid, Nettle Sentinel kill that won Luis Scott Vargas Pro Tour back in 2008. But it can also go very over the top with just grinding out with Wywood Symbiotes and Elvish Visionaries and play actually a very long fair game if it needs to. Why don't we just call it a tribal deck? Tribal deck that. is good. Tribal deck is good. <laughs> Meanwhile, the action's underway, and even though Julian is on a mold of five, he's got double death right shaman, which is probably his best way to interact in this match. If, knowing the matchup, he probably has to mulligan to it, but I don't think it's going to matter. Um, Caleb went straight for the turn one dark ritual and tomb shallow grave, so he has a grizzle brand in play. He's going to draw 14 cards. Probably more. I'm, I'm, he's probably going to draw a few more soon. Yeah. Up. Oh. Uh, so Ch Children of Corliss is uh, <laughs> is about to hit the table. No, uh, he's going to ritual a few more times. But uh, Caleb drew Children of Corliss, which is a one mana creature that says sacrifice this, uh, gain life equal to the amount of life you've lost this turn. So uh, Caleb just drew 14 cards. He paid 14 life, and then he spent one white mana to gain 14 life. So he's going to draw another 14 cards. Yep, and the nice thing, I guess, the difference between Shallow Grave and Gorio's Vengeance is Shallow Grave just cares about whatever the top creature of your graveyard is, so Caleb can use more copies of Shallow Grave to continuously bring back the children and draw even more cards since now he's paid 28 life this turn, so he's gaining 28 life by sacrificing the children again. Yeah, technically I think he may have used Reanimate. Uh, it, it totally doesn't matter. He gained... Yeah. This turn, he drew, what, 40-plus cards? He has 40 cards in hand, one card in deck. Um, so he's probably going to Ritual a few times and cast Tendrils, or he's going to go for the Emrakul kill. Yeah, he Either can, way... Al yeah, alternatively, he can put Emrakul in his graveyard and kind of like Gorio's Vengeance, Shallow Grave is an instant, so with Emrakul's reshuffle trigger on the stack, he, Caleb can bring it out of the graveyard, and because the Vengeance... Both either Vengeance or Shallow Grave gives haste, attack for 22 in the air. Actually, yeah, as you. Yeah, 22. What you're seeing here is yeah, Caleb's right. actually Cabal Therapying himself, naming Emrakul. Wait, is he? I think he may have. He did, it. he did, and I think he's just going for showmanship, uh, kind of like we've seen <laughs> a couple of players. Uh, Jacob Corey is a notable example who That's just possible. wanted to draw their wanted to draw their whole deck, uh, which, you know, why not? <laughs> Yeah, uh, so it looks like he uh, reanimated Children of Corliss again, gaining another, I don't know how many life, 60 or something, and uh, he's going to entomb the Emrakul. He didn't have to go through all this, but uh, oh, he's entombing the Emrakul to shuffle his deck so he can draw more cards and continue to go infinite. Yeah, it's my guess is he's probably going to do this just to draw his whole deck. Uh, this is... I guess one of the strengths of tin fins, where it's... I, I don't know what the average kill is. It's definitely the average kill is probably under turn three, and considering that Julian does not have Force of Will in his deck, there's no way for him to interact. So, uh, now I finally understand what Caleb was doing. He uh, got enough mana to hard cast Emrakul so he could take another turn and attack with Emrakul. So, ah, okay. Uh, Caleb wins on turn one. That's what you really need to know. <laughs> yeah, lo long story short, Caleb did a bunch of, you know, a bunch, a bunch of cool things that went uninhibited by lack of interaction on Julian's end, and now we get to sideboard. Okay, you want to check out uh, Julian's sideboard? I'll look at Caleb's. Yeah, uh, thankfully, uh, even though there's 
no, little confusion going on with the screens right now, we can head over to LegacyMediocreLeague.com and view every deck list from all of the competitors. Yeah. So I'm pulling up Julian's list right now. So it looks like Caleb doesn't actually have the Tendrils main. It's in his sideboard. Um, ah, okay. And he has four Monastery Mentor in his sideboard, which is good if Julian's only line of defense is, um, is Graveyard Hate. Uh, he's also got three Dark Confidant, which is interesting considering he's playing Emrakul and Gristlebrand, but, uh, you know, the chances of flipping those are pretty unlikely. Uh, um, I've definitely played Dark Confidant alongside, you know, Blightsteel Colossus and various <laughs> things in Vintage. Uh, my, guess, like my guess is that he's bringing in the Swords to Plowshares against an all-creature deck. Um, and past that, it depends on what Julian's doing. So, yeah, what's Julian, doing? Julian is doing what I thought he'd be doing. He'd be, he's, he's bringing in Pithing Needle to shut off the Gristlebrand. He's bringing in Surgical Extractions to interact with the Graveyard. And he's bringing in Cabal Therapy and Thoughtseize as just Hand Disruption. Uh, Caleb, he obviously has... At, at this point, everyone has access to everyone else's deck lists. So he knows that... Caleb might be trying to sidestep by using Monastery Mentor as what Ari Lax describes as a reverse storm card in the sense that you play it, then cast <laughs> all your spells. Yeah. Uh, um, so it'll be yeah. interesting to see what kind of counterboarding goes well, on you know, with that in some, mind. Something else with the uh, Mentor plan is that, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, Caleb can get a Mentor and a bunch of tokens out, but that, that <clears throat> excuse me, that doesn't actually kill Julian. Julian is capable of winning very quickly. So uh, I, I don't think that Caleb's going to go for a long game. I think he's going to keep it mostly the same. And as we can see, he does have a Swords to Plowshares. Yeah, definitely. He doesn't. He also has some hand disruption, but he doesn't have any white mana other than the Singleton shot off the Lotus Petal. Uh, nor does he really have anything else going on outside of the couple, few thought seasons and Cabal Therapies. And kind of like what I mentioned earlier, one of the things about the Elf deck is it really does have a potential to grind. So even if Caleb picks Julian's hand apart, if he doesn't have anything else going on, Julian can easily recover. Especially yeah. with a copy of the green gristle brand, Elvage Visionary. Julian's <laughs> words, not mine. <laughs> Sitting in his opening hand. Yeah, I don't think I like either of these hands for your, um, these players. Julian doesn't really have any way to interact, and here we see a mulligan. It's a great hand. Death Right Shaman, Pithing Needle, and Surgical are all cards he wants to see. And Caleb just doesn't have any way of um, of comboing, so I think Caleb... Oh, Caleb kept. Uh, yeah, I, could, I could definitely believe Caleb's line of thought is that he just wants the raw number of cards, he wants the resources, and that he, he has enough disruption... He has an answer for a lot of Julian's ways to interact with that Sword to Plowshares, and he can keep Julian off base enough to cobble something together, because as long as Caleb can buy enough time to assemble his combo and punch a hole, he's probably in he's probably going to be favored, I'd say. Simply because Julian doesn't have like Julian doesn't have brainstorm, Julian doesn't have ways to sift deck sift his deck through and actually find hate. Given enough time, given symbiote visionary shenanigans, he can definitely, or just a value glimpse of nature as opposed to win the game glimpse of nature, he can definitely see a lot of cards. But Julian was already on a mold of six with three dis three pieces of hand disruption. So uh, green sun zenith for scavenging use. Uh, Julian doesn't have access to that. That would that would be <laughs> once the scavenging use is on the table. That's tends to be pretty good. Yeah, so, that's that's another thing. But the Swords to Plowshares definitely is an in-hand answer to things like that. So uh, yeah. there's... And also, the nice thing about Shallow Grave and Goryeo's Vengeance is because it's an instant, because they don't target, if you can sequence it such that you can reanimate the creature in response to the death rite. It's kind of like, for those of you who have played Modern, it's similar to being able to Goryeo's Vengeance in response to shenanigans out of that deck. Uh, it's so, not quite as powerful because it can't kill at instant speed, but... So, Caleb used his uh, Chrome Mox and his second Thought Seize to cast his uh, Cabal Therapy after the Thought Seize on turn one, taking Julian's Pithing Needle, but Pithing, uh, Julian drew a Pithing Needle off the top and he's naming Gristlebrand with it. Yeah, that's the reason Julian brought in a card that was very fortunate. Uh, Caleb still can go, I guess, 
somewhat around simply by reanimating Emrakul if Julian doesn't have enough permanence and forcing him to sacrifice it. But I don't know how reliable that plan is. Greenson's so in the top, the top here. Yep, like you yeah, mentioned. Yeah, so, so Caleb's dealing with uh, Julian's ways of interacting. Uh, but Julian's, Julian's finding those pieces again. He just has so many of them, especially with Deathrite Shaman and Greenson Zenith. Um, so he finds another Deathrite Shaman, although he doesn't have much else going for him. It's a, it's a what, eight turn clock now? Yeah, eight, eight turns, assuming there are enough instants and sorceries, because the thing about the elf deck is that it's probably not going to put a lot of instants and sorceries in its own graveyard, especially Julian's version that doesn't actually play Natural Order. I just, you know, he tapped, he'd rather cast Natural Order, right? Anyway, yeah. regardless, um, so... I think actually from this point, I like Julian's spot because he can just sit back on the Deathrite Shaman and drain for two a turn. Um, and Caleb just doesn't have much. He just he has a Brainstorm and a Dark Ritual, but no way of actually comboing and certainly no way of comboing through a Deathrite Shaman. Um, so this is one of my favorite tricks. Julian plays out his fetch land. It's going to be a Dryad Arbor at the end of the turn and he's going to start attacking with it. <laughs> ah, very, very nice. Yes, yeah, the clock up, changes. Up, up. It's uh, two. It's still like a five turn. Well, it makes it yeah, five a... instead of seven because you've got what would be essentially sixteen, um, because death rate just drains in increments of two, so that's an eight turn clock realistically, as opposed to now a five turn clock with three a turn off the death rate and the dried arbor beats. Yeah. So, what do you think of Caleb always keeping two cards in his hand? Oh no, this isn't going to work, but. Theoret like if circumstances were a little different, he could keep two cards in his hand and always threaten Entomb plus Shallow Grave, and then Julian would be a lot more scared to uh, Death Ray Chaman. Oh, there's a plow. Yeah, I. It's an interesting line. I think at a certain point, though, Julian is savvy enough to just essentially call Caleb's bluff. Um, yeah. especially since Pithing Needle is on Gristlebrand, Caleb yeah. really isn't going to have much of a windfall to stop. Like, it's like, okay, well, I can end of turn, it's like, end of Caleb's turn, Julian can remove a card, and then Caleb can have a Gristlebrand in play until the end of Julian's turn, and that doesn't, like, actually accomplish much. So yeah. I like Caleb's line of aggressively digging towards and f eventually finding that Swords of Plowshares, and now cutting the clock basically off because he found Children of Corliss as a chump blocker for Dryad Arbor. Chump blocker? They trade. Children have power. Sure. Yes, <laughs> children do have power, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm actually surprised that he played the children there and didn't use it for an extra card for Brainstorm. Um, children on its own, especially starting from a low life total, isn't going to do much, although it looks like um, Julian isn't even interested in trading. Yeah, at this point, I think Julian is holding, wants to hold the Dryad Arbor for mana. Uh, Caleb also knew from the disruption that Julian, and just from being a savvy player himself, that Julian doesn't have a lot of actual business going on at this point, because Julian has more than enough mana that if he had, you know, Neville Sentinels or Wirewood Symbiotes or Elvish Visionaries, that he would put them onto the board. Mm -hmm. So Caleb, I think, is making the, you know, intelligent read that Julian doesn't have a lot going on, and at this point, his deck... He has fewer pieces to find out of his deck, just an Entomb for Emrakul. He's right in business. Well, neither player have much going on, and yeah. with the thoughts he's, it's going to be even less. Uh, it looks like Julian boarded out. Is he playing two uh, Dryad Arbors, like some elves' decks do? He uh, uh, fetched, and he found a basic forest instead of a Dryad Arbor. He's only playing one Dryad Arbor in his list, oh, okay. and he does not have a second in the sideboard. Um which makes sense considering the lack of natural orders. Dry oh, yeah, yeah, you, wa you want as a nice tar you want as a green sun zenith target because you can, you know, just pay one and essentially use it as a one mana rampant growth. But drawing dried arbor is the kind of the worst feeling in the world. So without natural orders, that second payoff of having a cheap creature you can always get makes sense going down to one. Looks like Julian's going for dr finally drew a creature. So he's firing off a glimpse of nature just as a minimum cantrip, but potentially something greater. Oh, no, this, a... this is great for Julian. He's going to Green Sun Zenith for a, uh, uh Elvish Visionary. 
Or I guess you could find a Wirewood symbiote with this. Yeah, I was I was gonna say, would you get an Elvish Visionary here, or would you get a Wirewood symbiote in this spot? I think I'd get the Elvish Visionary, and the reason why is because, well, yeah. I guess Alter it doesn't alternatively, matter he that could much. Go for, it, he could go for Scavenging Goose just to have that on board. It wouldn't, oh, draw, yeah, it wouldn't that... draw him a card, but yeah, that's oh, what yeah, he goes that's for. way better. Yeah, okay. Forget what okay. I was saying. Here's Emrakul. <laughs> Caleb has access to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 mana, 9 mana. He only needs 6 more in order to cast Emrakul. <laughs> yeah, I was actually, at this point, I'm now wondering if, he, if Caleb is going to try and hold his rituals or try to dig for them, because we saw him earlier in the game, putting them back. I wonder if Hardcast Emrakul is a real plan here. Oh, oh just maybe not. Just, just scoops, okay. You know what? Actually, with the scavenging goods there, and more than six permanents, even if he could cast Emrakul, he might not necessarily win the game. Like, he attacks once, and then the scavenging ooze attacks back for, <laughs> for the victory. Um, so I think he saw the writing on the wall. Uh, okay, so uh, here we get a better look at what the their sideboarding is. Looks like Caleb brings in the Monastery Mentors. Okay, I think Caleb is doing, you know, part of the fun of having a transformative sideboard is that you're the one who gets to be proactive with it. Game two, he didn't bring in the Mentors to try to level Julian into believing that Mentors just wouldn't come in in this matchup. So Julian, if he had creature, rem like, spot removal like the Abrupt Decays, which are generally useless... Julian would maybe take them out. And now Caleb gets to bring the mentors in for game the decisive game three, and Julian doesn't get to readjust his plan. And that's like, you know, some of the fun in the play of having transformational sideboards is you get to make the decision, and the opponent just kind of has to guess whether or not you are actually, you know, bringing in the alternate plan, or whether or not that you're not going to touch it, and then... They have to figure out, the opponent then has to figure out how much of their deck they want to devote to potentially dead cards. Yeah, well, I don't think that many of, um, many of Julian's cards are going to be totally dead. Like, they're all elves, right? Right. <laughs> He's got it's... some discard spells and some, uh, graveyard cards. He, I guess what, the important thing is that he doesn't have the abrupt decays for, uh... Right. And that's actually mentor. what I really liked about Caleb's sideboarding so far this match, is that because he didn't bring in the mentor for game two, Julian, or at least didn't show a mentor in game two, that would make Julian question whether or not to even leave in the abrupt, bring in the abrupt decays or leave in the abrupt decays. And now Caleb can bring them in game three and potentially catch Julian with his pants down. <laughs> I actually don't don't like uh, Caleb's sideboarding plan here. I think that um, the monastery mentors are like like I was saying earlier. Uh, he might get a monastery mentor and an army of monks, but you know Julian could just get an army of elves and cast Crater Hoof Behemoth, and then the that that's going to trump the army of monks. They're... Yeah, definitely <laughs> definitely agreed. Um, <laughs> it's it's interesting because. Both of them are kind of inherently slowing down their deck. Like, Julian is bringing in a lot more spells and a lot more ways to interact, and Caleb is slowing the speed of his deck down to try to have an alternate plan. So, looking at Caleb's hand here, it seems like the only thing he's missing is mana. But he's got a lot of cantrips and a lot of ways to find the mana. Yeah, he's, so, got, he's got Entomb uh, Gorio's Vengeance. Oh, wow. So, and he even has a Thought Seize for... Uh, Julian's surgical, although there's also a thought seize on Julian's end. So yeah, Ju Julian has a thought seize, a death right shaman, and double green sun zenith. So he's got a very interactive hand with a lot of ways to pun potentially punish the graveyard out of Caleb's end. I feel like Caleb has to take the surgical here because that's the only. Oh, yeah. That's the f the free answer, the free as it spell. were. Yeah. I mean. If he take if he doesn't take the surgical, then that means that Julian can either thought seize or death right shaman on turn one with surgical up, which is um not good for Caleb. <laughs> he can basically just have surgical up the entire game. So I think he has to take the surgical here. Julian's probably going to go uh oh, thought seize into turn two death right shaman. That's yeah, probably it's... the safest play. I, I like that play a lot better. Uh, Caleb's tapped out, and the, 
the speed of his turn kind of, you know. Even from this thought, Caleb could potentially have a turn one if he went, clearly not in his hand, but if he had a Lotus Petal and a Dark Ritual, Caleb would absolutely have a turn one here. So I think that just the inherent speed, the more conservative line would be the thought sees. But Julian, looks like Caleb took Julian's thought sees and then Caleb, ah, that's interesting. Caleb took Julian's thought sees, I guess, to protect his hand from the line we were talking about. And then Julian drew a Cabal Therapy, which he doesn't want to fire off blind. Because he doesn't know exactly what pieces are missing. No, gets, I, so it looks like uh, looks, Caleb's Caleb found like, a Cabal Therapy for the Surgical Extraction. Yeah, that actually makes sense. Playing, Caleb decided he wanted a bit of a long, decided to go a longer route. It seemed like he felt like he can play around the Surgical, which... Either through, you know, in this case now, he could even play around the surgical by entombing an Emrakul in response to the surgical and reshuffling. It means he wouldn't get his reanimation effect, but it also means whatever the surgical target is stays in his deck. So. Wait, no. This, uh, oh, yeah, 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 because the Emrakul gets shuffled in. Yep, the Emrakul would get shuffled in. Looks like he's putting back... Yeah, the Gristlebrand and the Redundant and Tomb, and then casting Cabal Therapy that he found, either finally getting rid of the Surgical Extraction, or maybe even taking the Green Sun Zeniths. Oh, no, I think you have to take the Surgical Extraction. Oh. Um, well, the trick so... here for Julian now is, do you want to fire off the Surgical in response, which would allow Caleb to shuffle? Um, oh, he takes the Zenith. Oh, right, he, it's Cabal Therapy, he can take both. Yep, yep, Cabal Therapy allows him to take both. So Caleb is still, you know, I guess content with playing the longer game, especially because he knows Julian's hand and knows that Julian doesn't have a lot going on, especially now that he's been stripped of the double Green Sun Zenith. Well, let's see what Julian decides to name off this therapy here. It's always hard, like, you know, I, I wouldn't say I've done a lot of commentary. Named in Tomb. Wow, yes, and then Caleb everything put is small here. Yeah, yeah, I think that that was really heads up because Caleb could entomb on upkeep in order to shuffle away the cards on top of his deck. We we all know about the perfect brainstorm and how you want to brainstorm with a fetch land, but uh, casting brainstorm and then entomb before you draw a card is also has the same effect. Yes, it does. But what Julian doesn't know and what we know is that Caleb had a second entomb that he hid probably on top. Mm. So that Cabal oh, yeah, Therapy... There it is. Yep. Right there. That was pretty heads up play by uh, Caleb. Yeah, the, I, I, this is none of this has been mediocre so far. I want a refund. <laughs> well, maybe 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 our lines have been mediocre and they're above we, expectations. We can so. refund your zero dollars, zero dollars participation fee, straight uh, back to your bank account. Awesome, love hearing it. Hopefully, That's I won't right. have to play a processing fee for rehandling that zero dollars and actually be <laughs> down money. Legacy mediocre. Now with refund. Okay, so uh, Caleb drew a. I, Ooh, he, ca he, can't he, cast pond he cast Ponder, and he either. We can't tell at this point whether or not he chose to shuffle. Um, I feel like it, he must have, because. Yeah, because uh, there's no way he'd want to. Because if you see Gristlebrand swords to plowshares, I guess maybe he kept. No, because even if you would see Gristlebrand swords to plowshares, a way to actually cast swords to plowshares, you would probably draw the the land and not the swords in order to protect it from any sort of discard spell. Yeah. So one can assume that he shuffled and then whiffed. Julian then did his, did the play you pointed out again of fetching for a Dryad Arbor to potentially increase, not only increase the clock, but increase, you know, increase mana production off Gaia's Cradle and then found a Shaman of the Pack just for a small amount of life gain, but more relevantly, a 3-2 attacker. So this is, uh, well, Caleb found a Cabal Therapy, and he knows about that Surgical. Um, Julian doesn't have any way to change the contents of his hand. Um, so he can Cabal Therapy that Surgical Extraction, and before something hits the graveyard, he's still not home free yet. He needs to Swords to Plowshares up. Oh, actually, he has all the pieces in hand. He can Plow the Deathrite Shaman, he can Cabal Therapy the Surgical Extraction, then he can Entomb Gorio's Vengeance. So this might be it. 
or this might be it. Julian still has one more draw. Julian has a turn. Um, so potentially Thoughtseize, potentially Cabal Therapy, uh, because Julian knows about the Gorio's Vengeance. Uh, Pithing Does Needle. Doesn't he need to Cabal Therapy now? Oh, you know what? If he Cabal Therapies now, and Julian fires off the... Oh, okay. So yeah, he, he needs to Swords to Plowshares now, then Cabal Therapy, the Surgical Extraction. Um... Oh, I think what the... I think the issue is he needs to have Black Mana in response to Entombing. Like, he needs to be able to... If he goes Cabal Therapy, Julian is probably going to Surgical Extraction and Tomb in response, so Caleb needs to be able to cast oh, yeah. the Entomb, and he did not have a second Black Mana available at that time. Yeah, you're totally right. So he has to sit back and hold. So a, a, yes. a, 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 a non-Chrome Mox Mana Source, I believe Caleb wins the game on the spot. Uh, Without well, that, I mean, he's got to sit back for another turn. There's always the chance that Tin Fins... Uh, sputters out and fails to uh <laughs> go off even when even when the setup is good but yes but, i think you're correct here's a yeah. flashback therapy sacrificing the dry darber yeah that's that's the play on julian's and he knows about the gorio's vengeance oh wow from the so first from julian's going to take the gorio's vengeance and uh wow that that's really good yeah leave caleb with basically nothing that Tundra not being a Tundra being Tundra instead of Scrubland is actually coming back to really bite Caleb his mana base. Even though Legacy is known for, you know, almost perfect mana bases, which is a definition one one of the two of us might be stretching in this in this tournament. Uh, oh, but he draws another one off the top. It's it's not well. So he doesn't have the mana to do it now. He has to do what we were talking about previously. Yeah. So Julian's going to have he, one draw step to get out yeah. of this. He has to Cabal Therapy. Julian is probably going to Surgical the Entomb in response. I mean... Yep. Oh, he's, no, he's Surgicaling the other Gorio's Vengeance. Wow. wow. Heads up play on Julian's end. Heads up play on Julian's end, and that actually Okay, Julian is not fair. He's basically a wizard. Yeah, Julian, very high probability of... But Are we, sure he's, not, are we sure he's not ghosting? Like, not... No, no, this actually makes a lot of sense. So, Julian very intelligently knew that... Uh, Caleb could entomb in response if he targeted the entomb. So his best chance was to, you know, throw it up in the air and hope that his, that Caleb, uh, or, or take out some of Caleb's combo pieces. So sure, Caleb could have Shallow Grave, but his best chance was to take out the um, Gorio's Vengeance, and he gets rewarded uh, very well here by hitting the card in Caleb's hand. That's actually unbelievable. Yeah, that, once again, I want my money back. That was <laughs> Jul Julian. I think consistently has shown that you know we've had a lot of Cobalt therapies flying around on either end, and there you know been kind of the phrasing in the past of someone who's been good with Cobalt therapy is that they're a Cobalt therapy sniper. Julian Knob is a surgical extraction sniper. Between <laughs> last week against Sneak and Show and this week against Caleb, I I don't know what else to call him. He's Caleb even needs to pay life for this Gataxian probe. Yeah, if he wants to. Ooh, it's a Chrome decides... it's not yeah. useful. Yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that play because not paying life doesn't actually change the clock here. Like he'd be oh. at one instead of three, but he's still dead next turn. Yeah, you could be right, and Caleb and... doesn't have anything. That's going to be the game. Julian's going to take it. Wow. Julian Hub. With time, some timely surgical extractions, wins this match. Two so to the, one. The thing that blows me away about Julian's play is that his sideboarded games are unbelievable. You'll you'll run to elves players that really know what they're doing with the main deck, but Julian just like his. I've never seen anyone play elves with that type of like awareness when it comes to sideboarded games. Julian, I. I've known of Julian for at least three years, possibly longer, and all he's done in that time is just play elves. He's probably played elves for longer than I've played than I've played miracles, which I've put in four years of time with that deck. He's as good. He's as good with elves as any specialist across any like history. You think of like Paolo Vitor Domitorosa with fairies, or a fellow legacy mediocre league member Joe Lissette with miracles. Julian is on that level with his elves deck, and it's really impressive to watch. All right. 
so uh we we've praised julian enough right we're going to get the check in the mail yeah uh, yes, hopefully. good okay hopefully, yeah um i think we're up next um like, yeah oh, all right okay so we're okay. up next i think there'll be some uh swirly space in intermission <laughs>